Hey YouTube, it's Skyman here, and welcome to the introduction of my new series, Learning Stow. In this video, I will be telling you a little bit about Stow, and what to expect from the game, as well as what to expect from my new series about the game. This guide will begin with the assumption that you have never played Stow before, meaning we'll begin with character creation and go all the way to endgame, maximizing your intake of resources and building a decent ship for space content and a respectable captain for ground content. This guide is going to be written and shown from a PC player's perspective, and while there may be a lot of overlap between PC and console, there are many differences as well. The UI, interface, and what options you can change are some of the most obvious and impactful differences. If I do not play on console and do not intend to, I will not be able to speak to the specifics of that platform choice. I want to present the game in its best light so you can see what is great and fun about it, but I also want to be honest about the issues players have with the game, so I will occasionally be pointing out aspects of the game that myself and others consider annoying or dislike. I think it is important to be honest about these things so that you will go into this game with your eyes wide open. That being said, there is a lot to like about the game and I look forward to showcasing that. No one is an expert on every aspect of Stowe, and even the people in the community we consider experts don't know everything about their respective fields. Stowe is an expansive and complicated game with many aspects and mechanics. I have a good overall knowledge of how the game works and how to get many of the resources in-game to help you better enjoy your journey and meet your goals. That will be the focus of this guide series. I will be covering the basics of building a ship to be sufficient for normal and advanced content that most players play. As for honing your build for the lofty goal of elite content, I will shout out those who can help with that and leave their links in the description when we get to those topics. So without further ado, time to talk about the game. So you're thinking of playing Stow. Let's start off by explaining what Stow is. There is a Star Trek themed MMO. It is closer in gameplay to World of Warcraft in both ship and ground combat than it is to Star Trek Bridge Commander for ship combat or Star Trek Elite Force on ground. It isn't a Star Trek simulator. If you are coming into this thinking you'll be able to fly around the galaxy and explore strange new worlds, you're probably going to be disappointed. While there are places from the Star Trek universe that can be explored, they are small in number and limited in terms of playability. Star Trek Online is not an open world. Most places you visit will be instance locations contained within a story mission or cooperative task force combat missions. Additionally, Stowe is primarily a combat focused game. The puzzles or mysteries to solve or diplomatic negotiations are few and far between. Most problems in the Star Trek universe may not be best solved with violence, but those aren't the ones they send us to deal with. During combat, both you and enemies can use special abilities. These abilities will be explained in depth later on in the series. But I bring them up at this juncture for a bit of a disclaimer for fans of Trek who are canon concerned. The abilities attributed to the sciences can be quite canon breaking. Take the ship combat ability Gravity Well for example. Your lone ship could be staring down an enemy fleet only to pop a gravity well on the lead vessel and have them all get sucked into a clump and explode in 5 seconds. If your inner Star Trek fan can get past the lore breaking space wizardry, it can be quite fun and wildly effective. You can choose to play the game very true to canon and only select abilities, equipment, and outfits that look right, or you can choose to be a space wizard, both with your ship and your captain. And even if you don't, the people around you might make that choice for themselves, and you're just going to need to be okay with that. I've seen Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Iceman, Storm, Cyclops, Colossus, Buzz Lightyear, and Shrek, as well as many other immersion-breaking characters running around. But there have been many a Star Trek crossover comic, so maybe they are actually immersion-affirming if you are a fan of the Trek that falls outside of the official core canon. Also, the existence of these player characters in-game is a testament to the variety of costumes and equipment available that people can make a character not only look the part, but also have the abilities to match. Star Trek Online does not have a well-supported PvP system, though it does exist. There is a niche circle of players who keep PvP technically alive, but it is certainly not well. The devs have only made a paltry attempt at resuscitating PvP with the competitive PvE or PvPvE reputation introduced several years ago. But that never took off and PvP has largely continued being ignored as a feature since then. If PvP is your thing, you'll have to look hard to find where it has been lost and forgotten to the sands of time, and should be prepared to be well and truly slaughtered by the experts who remain unbroken by the trials of bugs and world shattering imbalance in which they make their home. One of the other positive things about the game is that the story is really good from about the Iconian War arc onwards. The earlier missions can be hit or miss, but on the whole are respectable offerings. There are also some unique story elements based on your faction of choice. Romulans have the most unique story of the three. Speaking of faction choices, there really are only two true factions. You may be thinking, but good man, I have six starting choices. To this I respond, yes, you do. However, in choosing Starfleet, TOS Starfleet, or Discovery Starfleet, you'll always end up just being Starfleet. 
Choosing KDF will make you KDF, and choosing either Romulan or Dominion will just make you pick the Federation or KDF to ally yourself with. All of this is to say that you have the illusion of more choice on the start screen, but the cake is a lie and there are only two lights, no matter how many times the Cardassian shocks you. We'll talk more about those faction choices and how they affect you in a future video of the series where we will create our first character. Once you create your character and get started, you'll soon find that you'll be playing both in space and on ground. This is something quite unique to Stowe and that I've always really enjoyed. Being able to kit out your captain as well as your ship to your liking is a really neat feature and one of the more compelling aspects of the game. Now let's talk about free to play. Still went free to play in 2012 and unlike other games, this one actually can be played in its entirety for free. And with persistence, all of the cash shop items can be acquired without paying money. The only thing that's cash only is purchasing the lifetime subscription. There is a Dilithium to Zen exchange in game, which allows the Dilithium you can gather playing the game to be sold for the cash shop currency called Zen. At the time of this video being made, the exchange rate is stuck at the exchange cap and broken, for lack of a better term, due to the demand for premium currency outweighing supply. The length of time it takes for an exchange request to clear has gone from 5 days to about 15 over the span of the last month. The state of the exchange may stabilize, get better, or get worse. The devs promise they are looking into it, but I cannot guarantee if it will ever get fixed, or get better, or that if fixed, that it will stay fixed. So if this is a grave concern for you, I feel it is important to be aware of it going in. However, you don't need cash up ships or items to play and enjoy the game, especially so long as you just want to play the story and up to advanced difficulty content. If you want to play elite difficulty content, particularly the cooperative content, then that will take a long time to build to that level whether you pay money or not. Things you'll need to have are time gated, so whether you go in planning to pay or not, you'll be dedicating a lot of time to getting on par with long time players. You may be able to form a build without any cash up assistance that can meet the challenge, but you'll certainly be playing Elite Difficulty on hard mode. Well that's it for the preamble, stay tuned for my next video where we will start from scratch with character creation. That's all I have to say for now on this topic, so with that, this is Gaudyman, signing off, have a good one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, compliments, or complaints, please put them in the comments below. And as always, take care out there.